What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to take a look at the unloader valve on a gas pressure washer, this one being a Ryobi with a Honda engine. However, this will pertain to a lot of different makes and models because they do share a similar style of water pump. Now if you don't know what an unloader valve does, it actually stops the pump from building pressure when the trigger on the wand is not engaged. Now you might be thinking, why are we going to look at the unloader valve? And there's a couple reasons why. So the first reason is it may be hard to start your engine almost feeling like it's seized and that's actually due to the pressure building up while you're trying to start it and that is definitely a cause of a bad unloader valve or one that needs to be adjusted. Also another common issue is going to be low pressure. If you have an issue with your unloader valve you might actually think that the pump is going bad but that might not actually be the case so that's why we're going to take a look at the unloader valve first. Before we remove the valve you're going to want to get yourself a nice flathead screwdriver preferably one you can hit with a hammer on the back as well as a hammer. Next you're going to see a small clip on the left hand side. Go ahead get your flathead screwdriver in there and just slowly pry this away just being careful and it should come out pretty easily. So there you can see the clip. Once we get that out we're going to want to take off this black cover. Now this is actually really tricky to get off if it's never been off before. This one's been taken off before so it's a little bit easier um, but you might want to grab it with some pliers just be careful try not to rip it. So now at this point you can try and pull the valve out with your hand but most likely it's going to be stuck in there so you're going to want to put the flathead screwdriver on the back side of the valve and just hit it with your hammer a couple times and it should come free. There you go, just came out. Now it's a little bit hard to see but on this pressure washer I was dealing with a little bit of low pressure. It wasn't too bad but I knew there was something wrong with this valve. If you look where one of the o-rings sits, you can actually see that the metal um, is a little bit misshapen, so I think that's what the issue is here. Now the biggest issue you'll see is this actual front pin should move back and forth freely. If it doesn't, that is definitely a problem, so you're going to want to try and move that back and forth a little bit and try and get it unseized. Now if you can't, um, it really doesn't hurt to replace the valve. I think the ones I got were only about $10 each. You can see here on the new one how smooth that pin moves. And one thing you do want to keep in mind is where the adjustment screws are set. So make sure you take a picture, uh, look at both of them, and just see how far you're going to need to move them in. So once you start adjusting it, we can get it close to what the factory setting was. Also get yourself some plumber's valve grease. This is going to be used to lubricate the O-rings when we put them into the actual housing. Just help it slide in a little bit easier. Once you have some grease on the new O-rings, you can go ahead and insert it back into the pump. Now you can try and push this firmly and see if you can get it seated. In my case, the O-rings on this new valve were actually a little bit larger it seemed like, so I'm going to actually have to press this in. So now here I'm just using a standard wood clamp to apply a little bit of pressure against the back of the pump and just seat the new valve in. So you can see it's fully seated in there now and we should be good to go. You'll know the valve is seated fully if you can insert the clip. So go ahead, put that back. You might need to hit it a couple times just to get it fully inserted. Now we need to adjust the new valve. So go ahead, grab yourself a 17 millimeter and 10 millimeter wrench. Also, you're going to need a small hex key. I believe this was two and a half millimeters and it's going to fit in the end of the threads. First, you're going to want to use the 10 millimeter wrench and take off that outer jam nut. It might be tight, so you might have to use both wrenches to get a little leverage on it. Once you get that nut off, we're going to go ahead and start to adjust the actual unloader valve. Uh, this is what pushes on the spring and is going to adjust the pressure. So if you turn it in clockwise, you're going to actually increase the pressure. And if you turn it counterclockwise outwards, you're going to decrease the pressure. Now we need to be careful. We definitely don't want to adjust this too much because you can actually stall or damage the engine. And here I'm just using that hex key to kind of hold the valve in place so I can actually turn it. You want to try and adjust the valve as close to the old one as possible, so make sure you have that old valve still so you can kind of hold it up next to it and see how far that nut is against the threads. At this point we can actually leave the jam nut off and start up the pressure washer and we can just see how the pressure is doing. So it actually looks like we have pretty good pressure after the first adjustment, but I do think we can get a little bit more out of it. Um, as you can see, the engine is not stalling or anything, so that's great. Now I did put the jam nut back on loosely, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up. And now I'm just going to take the 17mm wrench 
and I'm gonna go ahead and turn in the main nut clockwise, which is gonna put a little more tension on that spring, which is gonna give us more pressure. Now, like I said before, just be careful with this. You really don't wanna to go too much. You could damage your engine. So just kinda of use common sense and you will be able to feel with the wand how much pushback you get. Um, so go ahead and just uh, keep doing small adjustments and testing it out. So at this point I was actually happy with the adjustments so I think I'm going to leave it here. The only other things we have to do is make sure you have that jam nut tightened up and then put on the small black plastic cover which just protects the unloader valve. Alright, well thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, feel free to subscribe and like the video. Also feel free to check out my other videos with different repairs for small engine equipment.